today we are hiking Angel's Landing. Woo! Fun fact, a Methodist minister said that Angel's Landing was so high up and so beautiful that only angels could land there. And that's how it got its name. Oh shit. Okay, just one step at a time. One step at a time. Quick, Mom, no hands. Hey, I'm Lana. And I'm Casey, and we are Class C Broads. In today's video, we are going to tell you what to expect if you are going to hike Angel's Landing, and also give you some tips for hiking it. Now, it looks scary, and in some respects, it is, because we are gonna hike all the way up there. If you've done Angel's Landing, I'd also be curious to know what you think of it. Were you as scared as we were? I wasn't scared. Talk for yourself. Oh, well, you'll hear all about it in this video, so stick around. Fun fact, Angel's Landing was originally called the Temple of Aeolus? Aeolus? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Anyway, in Greek mythology, he was the ruler of winds. First thing you need to know about hiking Angel's Landing is you've got to be lucky and you've got to plan ahead. And that's because you need a permit. And there are two types of permits. One is one that you get ahead of time, like in April for the summer months, and the other is just a day ahead permit. You cannot get a permit on the day you want to hike, and it's a lottery system. And we were lucky because we decided to do the day before permit process. I applied, it was $6 for my application. You applied, it was $6 for yours, and I was the lucky winner. Winner, winner. The NPS then charged me an additional $3 for each of us to go on the hike. And so it basically cost us $18 total to be able to hike Angel's Landing. If you're lucky enough to win the lottery, your journey to Angel's Landing begins at the grotto, which is stop number six on the shuttle bus system. And in our case, we could either get a before 9 a.m. start time or an after 9 a.m. start time in the lottery. And we were lucky enough to get the after 9 a.m. start time. And of course, we got there promptly at 9 a.m. Don't forget to download your permit offline because they can ask for it anywhere on the trail and there's not internet access while you're climbing. When you start the hike, it starts off kind of slow, but don't underestimate the first part of the hike along the West Rim Trail, because about a mile into it, you get to some pretty steep switchbacks. Okay, what grade do you think this is? 15. I'd say at least 20, maybe 30. There's a lot of people at the bottom just waiting, catching their breath. And it gets worse from here on out. Oh. Canyon and 
it's been cool all day, so we don't notice much of a temperature change. But if it was sunny, I'm sure it would be a nice reprieve. Yeah, because there are basically large canyon walls on both sides of us. So it's shaded all of the time. Fun fact, there's no apostrophe in Angel's Landing. Since the 1890s, there's this entity called the U.S. Board of Geographical Names and whatnot. And basically, they make all of the official names. And there are no apostrophes, with five exceptions, in any geographical landmarks. Bureaucrats always making exceptions. Yeah. You can't just be straightforward. But Angel's Landing, no apostrophe. So then what's up with the apostrophe in Walter's Wiggles? Well, I think that's just part of the trail, so it doesn't have an official name and falls outside of the apostrophe rule. There are 21 switchbacks in total, and while there's only 300 feet of elevation gain, it feels like a lot more. When the Wiggles were constructed back in 1926, they were named after Walter Roosh, who was the first superintendent of Zion National Park. I wish I was a dog right now and I could pant and cool off. <laughs> Damn you, Walter. I'm blessing you and I'm cursing you at the same time. Thanks for making them, but could you stretch them out a little bit? Fun fact, the first recorded ascent to Angel's Landing was made by park ranger Harold Russell back in 1923. Walter's Wiggles hadn't been built yet, so he didn't have the advantage of them. Ooh, I wonder what his route looked like. Well, I bet he knew Walter, and that's why they got built. <laughs> he said, hey, Walt, why don't you go up there and make me some Wiggles? So this is Scout's Lookout. If you don't want to go to the top of Angel's Landing, this is a great place to turn around, have a snack, grab a drink and then watch your crazy friends go to the top of Angel's Landing. You also have to have a permit to get beyond Scout's Lookout, so this is your turnaround point if you don't have a permit. It's kind of hit or miss when you're going to see a park ranger. We saw one right around the start of the trailhead at the grotto, and he actually checked us in, but then interestingly enough, right at Scout Lookout before you start your big descent, there wasn't any park ranger checking permits, at least when we were there. Right. There's also restrooms at Scout's Lookout, so if you have to go potty, this is the place to do it. Scout's Lookout has it all. So, what do you do with all that poo up at Scout Lookout? Well, fun fact. It's called Helipoo Day, and a helicopter comes with these big drums and takes all of the poo away. So think before you go. And check to make sure it isn't Helipoo Day because it closed the trail on those days. We made it this far. We're heading up for the rest. So after Scout Lookout is the famous spine. It's also called the Hog's Back. And there are a couple things that you should know about that part of the hike. At least for me, it was very daunting. It was very scary. But the other thing you need to know is that there are chains along the way and you will definitely use the chains. There's this false sense of security right now because there's rocks here, but it's sheer drop off. That cactus will totally catch you. <laughs> See those people going all the way up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh my, this is the part right here. Hey, 
take it one step at a time. One step at a time. Where are the chains? <laughs> Where are the chains? You don't oh. need chains, they're steps. Just the chains. I need the chances. <laughs> I think the things that are important to know about this part is that there's definitely a path that you will follow. So you're not meandering around and you have little handholds and footholds that you can use to make you feel safer. And you might have to scramble around some people, but everyone was very nice and very patient. And people also make a lot of jokes along the way. I think you hear a lot of, are we there yet? Is this it? Is this the end? And no, you're not there yet. You'll know. Fighting for their lives. <laughs> okay, we made it. So excited. It was not as challenging as we thought it would be, so that's good. You know, I think. I think Lana maybe hyped herself up a little for it. Um, people are very patient and they let you pass and you let them pass. And I think the, that the permit system is working so that it's not overcrowded. Yeah, everybody was super polite and understanding and would wait a lot of patience on the trail. And, you know, there were scary parts. We still have to go down and looking down might be worse than going up. But if I can do this, you guys can do this. When you get to the summit of Angel's Landing, of course, you're going to celebrate and just marvel in the views. In one direction, you're going to look down on Big Bend, which is actually where we're filming this right now. And you'll see this big rock formation called the Oregon. You'll have a great look at the Virgin River. In another direction, you'll see the canyon where you just hiked and you'll think, oh my gosh, I just did that. Of course, the last part of the hike is the descent. It's a lot different and you, you know, you've just done this, but you're now you're looking down and you're heading down. And it's, I would say that that's a little bit more intimidating, but there's a tip for you here. If you ascend backwards like you're going down a ladder, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, at least for some people. I felt more comfortable facing forward. I think you felt more comfortable looking up like you were going down the ladder. Yep. I don't have a fear of heights. I just have a fear of risk in general. And I felt comfortable doing this hike. So I think you were hyped up before and then when you got on it you did so much better than your thought process yeah it's it's technical and so you have to watch you know one foot where's your next foot gonna go and you should actually watch both feet not just one foot <laughs> but i really don't think that it's that technical because a lot of places are worn down and you know where you're gonna put your foot so our deets for angels landing are as follows we started at nine o'clock. We got to the peak at noon, so three hours up. Then it took us an hour and a half down. But the time that we spent actually moving was only two hours and 10 minutes. So that tells you we either stopped to rest or we had to wait on people. So you must be patient. You have to go in to Angel's Landing knowing that you're going to wait. And how do you know how much we were moving? 
My Samsung watch tells me it auto pauses every time we stop. We also have a few tips for hiking Angel's Landing. And the first of which is to have some sort of camera that you can strap to your chest or your head like a GoPro. I can't tell you how many people wish that they had a GoPro on the hike because it's really difficult to take pictures with your phone, get your phone out, etc. Another great tip is depending on the weather, bring a pair of gloves because the chains can get really hot or really cold on the day we did it the temps were in the 70s low 80s we didn't need gloves but if you are in those extreme temperatures gloves can be very helpful the last tip and the one I think is most important is treat yourself three words for you treat yourself go grab a beer at Zion Brewing Pub outside of the park and treat yourself Cheers. We hope this video helped you make a decision about doing Angel's Landing. And if you decided to do it or not do it, let us know why in the comments. And if you like this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers! Was by Park Ranger Walt Harold. <laughs> What's his name? I don't Harold. know. Let me look. Is it Aeolus or Aeolus? Or Areola? Ah. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Somebody was doing it way before I was. Not so fun fact, in the last 20 years, 15 to 20 people have died doing Angel's Landing. Don't you be the next. <laughs> God, you scared <laughs> the crap out of me. Look at me again. No, look at me. Tip your head up. So Scout's Landing is where Scout, you- Scout, look out. After Scout Landing is, of course, Scout this. Lookout. Okay. They got to take a helicopter. Fun fact. Do you get too excited? There's water. Do you not know which? Oh, tramp stamp it. Whoa. <laughs> So another good tip for hiking Angel's Landing is to check the weather before you go. We were lucky, it just started pouring here about 30 minutes or so after we got done with our hike. So check the weather. You don't want to be stuck up there when it's all slick and nasty. For the rest of the tips, I'm going to speed this up because there's common sense sort of things to think about. The first of which is go early. If you happen to have a before 9 a.m. permit, get to the trailhead as early as possible because Angel's Landing gets busy or as the morning goes. Another tip, check the weather conditions. You don't want to be stuck on a high cliff. If it's raining out, it makes the rock slick. Not a good idea. Wear appropriate footwear. Get some good hiking shoes. Another tip, bring plenty of water. You will get thirsty on your hike. A lot of people use hydration backpacks like camelbacks. Another tip, use sunscreen, wear a hat because it will be sunny on parts of the trail, but hold on to your hat because it's also very windy, especially when you do the hog's back spine part of Angel's Landing. Another tip, pack a snack, food. You're probably gonna wanna have a little snack at Scout Lookout. Another tip, hike within your comfort level. Another tip is to leave no trace. Pack it in, pack it out, be a good steward of our public resources. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers. Cheers.